Anthony here from Outlier and David Millard from Ecowise Homes. We're uh, really excited to announce that we're starting construction at our uh, Littleton Street uh, project. Um, it's, a, it's an 8.4 energy rating and it's the first of uh, our collaboration with the hybrid home. And uh, yeah, we'd, we'd really like to share this, uh, this journey with you all. So we'll be documenting it all the way through construction, sharing all the videos and tips and, and, and really presenting those really unique details that we've, uh, we've created specifically for this project and for hybrid homes moving forward. Why don't you reach out to us and come check it out at some stage. The project's located in Castle, Maine, which is around an hour and a half north of Melbourne, which is it's not really that far from the geographical centre of the state. It's a really unique, rich history, um, but more recently was uh, part of the massive gold rush that occurred in Victoria and Australia. And it's surrounded by Ironbark Forest and a really interesting geographical formations, which fortunately for us, this site had lots of. It had been exposed by the previous owners in a large site cut uh, and it had been tiered up the side of the, of the hill. It, it, the vegetation had regrown and um, it borders a, a green run or a, a green strip of land and feels as though you're sort of in a more rural setting again than where it's located, perched on top overlooking the township of Castlemaine. It's within a few minutes walk from the CBD and it has great access to, to everything, um, public transport and also the recreational areas of Castlemaine and schools and whatnot. So our clients knew that they were building this home to retire into. Um, and it was a big part of the design brief was, hey, we wanna be here for our days. Um, we wanna be able to come and go as we travel and enjoy our retirement. So I'm going to run through uh, some of the plans that we prepared for our Littleton Street project and just discuss uh, some of the elements that define this, this design. And we've seen in plenty of the video visuals by now that we have this really large expanse of rock outcrop all the way around the home. So as you can see here. So that was a really big important part of our design response. We knew that we had an opportunity to protect and shelter the site from all the prevailing wind directions and weather patterns. And it also uh, allowed us to then be able to set the north living spaces back as far as possible from that to maximize solar gain. And now we've been able to create this beautiful, nice sheltered courtyard area here. So that's protected from wind and weather. Um, it also allows these really um, rare opportunities to, to capture sight lines sort of to the bushland beyond over the top to the trees and also to the rock face um, and it's quite dramatic we have this great opportunity as well to get views over the top of the township and the hills and mountain ranges beyond so to do so though we needed to be able to create a sight line um, that essentially was just over the top of the tree canopies. So here's our lower story down here, which we can't see. But then once we're up on the balcony, we we're able to just see over the tops of the tree lines. So we emphasize that by putting it here on the west. Now, yes, it's not ideal on the west, but it, the views out over the township and the hills, mountains beyond were, were just worth that, uh, worth that sort of orientation. We were very selective in the glazing at those locations, however. Um, the roof forms were decided upon for a couple of reasons. Once, once we're down at the uh, road here and we look up, we're sort of looking um, beyond the roof form. So here's our roof form up here. And this is why we decided to go with a gable ended roof form is that we're looking beyond. If we had have chosen a skewian roof, you know, it would block that and be quite obtrusive. And we just wanted to ensure that we could see that. What that's also allowed us to do though we have this gable remember this is north is now we can maximize this whole entire north um, roof form with solar panels so that was a great opportunity as well uh, we have a very restrictive building envelope it's um, it's actually the house is actually built to it and this is due to the Bell 29 bushfire requirements 
Um, so we've built right to that away uh, to the south so that we can again maximize that solar gain into the north and the north private space. And we decided to go for a detached carport as well. So again, you can see through the carport, um, it allows us to maintain the human scale of the approach and entry to this building. Uh, and also another sort of outdoor space, uh, under roof outdoor space that can be utilized by just putting the cars back up and parking them here. There was a swimming pool. Well, there is a swimming pool in this particular project. And again, we were able to um, have some sight lines and views out from the living spaces and the courtyard over that pool. But it was also important that it did form part of that courtyard. So it's one of our borders um, to the courtyard, as you can see here. Our clients for this project were going into retirement and they wanted to basically be able to age um, in place. So we had zero step um, entries or zero thresholds to cons consider. We also wanted to minimize the amount of openable doors um, so that you know there's continuous transition circulation space throughout the home. If we look at the living space here, we can also note that there's a little bit of a rectangular area nominated. That's a provision for a future lift. Um, this particular lift uh, is just a plug and play, so that will just get plugged into a general power outlet, and then we can uh, just slide the lift in place. We've made provision for um, the floor here to be removed at any moment in the future that we wish to. So that'll just be the um, flooring up top, will just be re floor covering up on the upper story, will just be removed here. And then the floor uh, structure can be then just taken out and lined with plaster on the returns and then the, the lift installed. Uh, we did opt for a spiral staircase just to really maximize on floor real estate. Um, it's a really nice feature. It also meant that we could incorporate a higher set window here that essentially creates a light well down into the lower story as well. Um, the big thing about the bottom uh, story or the, the ground level is there's no doors um, at all. So you're able to move throughout the entire home without actually having to uh, open a door. We have got a sliding here, but sliding door here, but it's a full height floor to ceiling and it's left open most of the time. Um, lots of circulation space around everything. It's uh, yeah, it was a big part of what we were trying to achieve. We also have the spare bedroom um, up, up above and to then consider all our heat recovery ventilation duct work, we've, we've allowed a void and that falls directly over the top of the HRV here so that it goes up and we've just continued to bulkhead through to get an extract in here and then there's a fresh air supply in here. Uh, picture framed windows were really important. Um, I'll start with the bottom. We have continuous glazing all the way across here, which is north. Uh, we've got a little bit of westerly glazing, but again, these sight lines look out over the courtyard and the pool and then the bushland beyond. We've got pergolas shading all of that northern glazing and we've deepened the shading of the pergola area here to the master bedroom um, and that will have deciduous vegetation over it as well to create a vertical um, shading element. Up up above, we've got, uh, again, another big picture window that looks out over the courtyard and pool to the rock face beyond. Um, it's facing north into that living space. I will add that uh, we also have provision. So there's actually wiring in place and a provision for an external blinds on the western glazing, external blinds with just an electric push button operation. Um, the clients have opted to just leave the blinds off at the moment and just live in the home and, and see how they go. Um, if, yeah, if they're getting too much solar gain, then sure, we can have those blinds retrofitted at any time. Uh, we wanted a clean, seamless sort of look to the home. We wanted to try and minimize uh, any external um, services. So we created a service yard at the front here. And this is where all of the pool equipment lies. It's also where the provision for the future battery is. Um, all the heat pumps, uh, external edit source heat pumps um, are here as well. And we've also got a provision here for an electric car charging point if the clients wish to install that at a future date. This home is an airtight home. Um, we initially started this journey to go for a certified passive house uh, standard of design and construction. Uh, just due to budget constraints, we, um, we removed the uh, 
aspect of going for the certification. However, we still wanted to be able to keep the home as airtight as possible. Um, and we've been able to get a result of 0.6 air changes an hour at 50 pascal, um, just using plasterboard. So we don't actually have a dedicated airtight layer, but I just wanted to draw that now for everyone and just highlight exactly where that is on this build. So the internal airtight layer is formed by part of the flooring here all the way along. It returns up on the plasterboard and it goes to the bottom of the truss cord. And then we've got a little connection detail here where there's a steel structure, um, steel structure um, here, but we've also then put plywood over the face to connect that together. And that continues all the way up here and then all the way along and down. So that is our continuous airtight layer. We've had to use a few little inventive um, construction details that, to get that to work, but nothing that um, isn't conventional or is not uh, just conventional materials um, or building practices. For the external uh, layer, we've got our uh, continuous uh, insul sorry, the insulation layer. We've got a continuous insulation here. Um, this is actually all insulated as well, which isn't shown on this drawing prevents that thermal bridging from occurring and that continues all the way under the slab um, follows out here and comes up here and then continues up the wall into the ceiling space and then continues up so it's a nice and continuous insulation layer now we also have our external WRB um, on our walls here but what we've done is just finished it short at the top cord to allow continuous airflow into these roof spaces. And this is, in this instance here, we actually have a little double flushing fold that allows that airflow to continue up the ventilator cavity. And then into, again, just at the top cord there, we've got allow, uh, some proprietary vents in there, and then that can also come out to which we have a ventilated root, uh, ridge capping uh, lysite um, product. So we put the smoke machine on the, on the weep holes um, at the brickwork here, and we were able to demonstrate that there was continuous airflow occurring right up and out. Um, what we did find though, that that is really only effectively happening when you have a large amount of solar gain hitting there, causing that heat stack effect to flow. What was interesting to find out was that that actually works negatively as well. So as there's airflow or pressure difference occurring here via wind, it's actually pushing it down and it's still creating airflow through that entire ventilated cavity, um, which is really important. So we want to ensure that we have continuous airflow all the way around the extremities uh, or the external faces of the, of the building. So that manages our condensation externally. Uh, this project is uh, it, yeah, filled with um, devices, sensor devices that are giving us live feedback on all of this, and so far it's working beyond our expectations.